I'm happy to read it. Um, many, many people will know in the room that I was the leader of the Vote Leave campaign in 2016 in Harlow, in which over 68% and nationally a majority of 1.2 million people voted to leave. I'd like to know how each of the candidates and their parties would deliver on that democratic decision. Yeah, sure. Um, I, think, I think we all know that Brexit has been a completely divisive issue. And unfortunately, it has taken three and a half years. The Conservatives have got through, what, three leaders? Um, Labour have really tried to negotiate a deal that actually works for working class people like the people of Harlow. Um, and it is, it, is, it is incredibly difficult. I speak to people on the doorstep in Harlow and they just want to get Brexit done. And I understand that. I myself voted to leave the EU. But what I did not vote for is this terrible Brexit deal that Boris Johnson is offering us. And it doesn't do anything for working communities like Harlow. And we all know that. And the reason why people are voting for it is because they just want to get it done. But I'm sorry, that is not the answer. It really isn't. So the Labour Party have got a really difficult, they're in a really difficult situation. They're the only party that are actually trying to reunite, trying to unite both sides. So if you voted leave or remain, it's not about that. It's about the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. It's about those who struggle. <laughs> when Harlow voted to leave. Yeah, they're frustrated, but we need to get a deal that actually protects working class communities. And that is what Labour is offering. Not this rubbish um, deal that, that the Tories are offering, a, a, a good deal for working people. And uh, and that's what I, I, I believe in, and Thank that's what I support. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Charlotte, your party is just offering a definite, another referendum and nothing else, is that true? Yeah. Uh, our, our, no, our party is saying that we, we will revoke Article 50 and stay in Europe. And a large part of the reason for that is to protect working people because we believe that coming out of Europe will do terrible damage to the British economy. And also we've seen with uh, <coughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg and people like that, the sort of economy they want to move Britain to after Brexit is like a, a, Sing a Singapore... Uh, next to Europe with low workers' rights, low pay. You, you look at a country like America, who we will be competing with outside of Europe, they have a uh, two weeks holiday, that's, that's all you're entitled to in America. Still you're only entitled to about six weeks maternity leave. These are the sorts of economies we will be competing with if we leave the EU. Inside the EU we are working with a large enough block that we can make sure that there are workers' rights and protections and environmental protections uh, as well. So we believe that working in Europe, we're much stronger, we're much able to better able to uh, help working people and make sure that we have rights across the board. And the other thing I hear is we want to get it over with. Dream on, dream on. If, if Boris Johnson really does take us out in January, and then has a year of, there's a, at least a year, he says just a year, of negotiating with Europe what our deal will be, what our trade arrangements will be with Europe, our major trading <coughs> party just across the, the channel from us. He's going to spend, he says, just a year. Well, I'll be surprised if he does it in a year, but let's accept that he can do it in a year. There's then the 40 other countries with whom the EU already has trading arrangements, so with whom we already have trading arrangements through the EU, we'll have to renegotiate those. We'll also have to be fighting something from the World Trade Organization because China and other countries within the World Trade Organization are taking us to that court because they say that the deal that we in Europe are suggesting about how their trade deals are split between us and, and Europe <coughs> is not fair, so we'll be fighting a legal action there. It'll go on for years and years and years of uncertainty and with, with businesses <laughs> struggling, businesses not investing, uh, people losing jobs, people losing job security, people losing their rights. And so we believe that we should stop Brexit and get on with running this country for people so that they have a decent standard of living which we think you get through the EU. 
and not outside of the EU. Three years of debate after debate after debate, um, everybody's sick to the teeth of the whole thing. Do you really think people knew what the process was when they ticked that box, yay or no, back in Well, it seems incredible to me, absolutely incredible, that the people voted to leave in 2016. In Harlow, 68% voted to leave, and three years on, we still haven't left because it's been blocked by arch remainers who won't accept a democratic yeah. result. actually voted for Article 50 a few years ago, honourably, now say they want a second referendum with Remain versus Remain on the ballot paper. So giving people no choice about workers' rights. Well, why can't we in this country decide what workers' rights are? Why do we need to give it to foreign powers to let decide what the workers' rights are? for long enough. They said that Boris wouldn't get a deal. He got a deal, which is a good compromise. It's time to get Brexit done. And as far as the Liberal Democrats are concerned, the word they have, their party is called Liberal Democrats, and yet they want to deny a democratic uh, vote, uh, which was taking place in 2016. They said, people voted for a referendum, let's go on and deliver it, and then you can worry about either having a second referendum under Labour or going to the people with a revoking uh, and ignoring that referendum result. Let's get Brexit done. <laughs>